Right, I'm down at Pondwood. I've simply got to try this float fishing, to be honest. And they're not just ordinary floats. These are ones somebody sent me, one of my mates. I think it was Jerry sent me these. And they're supposed to light up on impact with the water. Now, I don't know how long they last, but I aim to fish into dusk. So we'll see if they actually do work. I don't know whether they're homemade or the water seeps in there or what, but I'm going to give it a go. There's only a couple of other people fishing here today. Um, I'm late to the party, it's half past four in the afternoon. But we'll give it a go. Just use my ordinary rods, carp rods. The downside is, I've forgotten my head cam left that, uh, head cam strap, I haven't got that, so it's handheld all the way. Uh, of course, I've got my backup camera, the main one, and happy days. I've forgotten the tripod. So it's not a good start, is it? But I'm looking for a couple of fish. Catfish I'm after, and my secret bait, and hopefully with a float. Once I get rigged up, I'll uh, drop it in the water and we see if anything happens. I'll look really stupid if they don't light up. I've got the float like that, bottom end only. It looks like this. Maybe there's an integral weight in there, I don't know. But it doesn't say what shot it takes, so I'm just going to have to keep piling on and see if it is self-writing or if it's... Uh, well, certainly, look, it's like a rainbow. I think it's made in China, I feel fairly sure. And it's joined in the middle there. Well, I just put it in, it's got 2BB, and it's, and it's, and it's, it looks like it's perfectly shot in. It doesn't say 2BB. I'll show you, I'm not even sure it isn't actually lit. I don't know. I'm gonna have to move stuff around here, boys, and give us a bit of organization, because I've got, I've got a tiny mini tripod there, but I don't know if that's gonna go on that one. You see, I've got to unbolt that. You know, I'm in a mess with photography at the moment, but fear not. Get that over the back. I'm always in a mess fishing, so don't don't worry too much. Now I just think it's the colour of it. It looks brighter than when I had it just now. I just leave it soaking in the water, I guess. Just leave it down there. The other one I'm going to put with a stand-up waggler and a starlight on top and a beta valve rubber to uh, hold that on so I know that's going to work and if that doesn't I'll have to do the same with this but we'll let that one soak for a while. I'm looking at him again, I think there's some sellotape, it looks like he's been joined in the middle there. Is that just to hold it? Should I... Do I peel something off? There's no instructions. I'm going to peel this off and see if the, that makes the contacts of the water. Bear with me. You guys might not see it, but just there, I've just bent up two pieces of wire. So I think that's actually glue there, and maybe you have to pull those apart, you know, just there, to make some contact with the water. It doesn't look like it's lit to me. Well, you can see there, if I get it in the dark, that it looks like it might actually be working. So I won't know till it really gets dark. But I fear, once I put my bait on there, it's going to pull it under. So these ones are the standard uh, sort of star lights. It says something around 4.5 times 35 mil. Five in a pack which is handy. Pack's been open. These ones I'm more familiar with using and it's uh, two chemicals separated by a sort of glass file in the middle of a plastic file and you just bend it like this and they normally crack just give it a good old shake around and that should they are that, that if I go in there can you see that that's the standard one we've always always used and because the benefit of these is being too liquid you can actually freeze them so if you only fished into the dark a couple of hours and didn't want to keep using them you can freeze that and use it again another time in the hot weather say tropical weather they burn very bright but for a shorter period and in cold weather they go less bright, but they will last a long time. Right, let's rig this one up, probably somehow on that float like that. We're going to rig him on the float, I think. I've rigged this up, as you can see, with a couple of valve rubbers at the top here, like that. That's got the light stick attached to it, and down here, a very long valve rubber tube in to hold it in place. So I put my trace on there, and then uh, bait up. And we we'll throw out now this one's going to stay light 
all the time till dusk comes. Look, if I cover it right up, there you can see in there that one's glowing, whereas the other one I'm really not sure because as I take it out of the water, it seems to go out. I've managed to get the uh, <laughs> look at the rust on it, the rusty bendy leggy thing screwed into the fitting on the bottom of this camera. So I can almost, if I get this bait bucket thing level, I can at least hopefully. Oh dear, it looks a bit hazardous. Whoa, drink up. Get you um, something of a picture. Yes, they are. If I get it set up right, we can uh, hopefully get some of that. It's not going to be an epic, but uh, we can show you a fish if you do get one. Well, I've got both baits out there. I can't unfortunately show you casting. That's going. <laughs> Camera fell over, missed that one as the screen was spin out about 40 seconds. Right, I'm out of game. What was it? I just saw the float go as I thought, hang on, isn't that a live bait? Uh, that was definitely a catfish, just rocketed off, and you could see it was screaming away. I've taken it off the bait runners now, and I've just got it straight on back wide because I feel that would hold the hook in a little bit longer. And of course I've got the float, which I can see my one over there. The yellow doesn't stand out as good as the orange is just here. I'll just bump it once. There. There's pop right up. You guys won't see it. I can get it on the longer camera. And that's standing up really well. That's just with 2BB and my bait on the end. And that's about 30 inches deep. So I figure them off the bottom. Mix it. It's about 4 feet across here. So you know, fairly uniform. But my other one here, I would think it's a little bit deeper, is on the bottom. I cannot believe that that take came as I was holding the camera. I just saw the float just, what's this going on, you know, like a live bait. Actually, as I saw it moving, I should have actually wound straight on it then. Let's hope we get another chance and it's not it's that one, uh, one take. I'll tell you what, this bait can be something else when it gets going. I've had to try and wipe it off my hands. It's, it's almost the wife sending me to the spare bedroom tonight if I come in just for the smell of my fingers. You just need to wash all the time. Well, that's enthusiastic. I'm holding the camera there hoping they'll get another take. And of course, as soon as you've got the camera and you don't. There's nothing better than a bit of experimental fishing like this. I mean, I've never used those floats before. Um, they were... I don't know where, I think it was Jerry that gave them to me, but so to make the contact you have to bend these two little bits of wire up on the outside and as it's in the water it makes contact. I feel sure it's working, but I won't know for another was it five, six, seven, or probably a couple of hours to actually whether it is you know, gonna work or not. Painting obviously that the bait works, there's no question on that at all. I'll make sure I've hidden it something's knocking it it could be a carp it could be a carp knocking it or it could be a catfish just nosing it i don't know i don't know i, was, I would always imagine that they come straight up and just engulf it in one big whoosh so i'm hoping when i see that float go again it'll pull the line tight i've got the buzzers to bite indicate i may even be able to show you that float over there on the longer lens on the other camera Another little tip I do, when I'm fishing with the reels on backwind, I put the ring, the rod ring, this side. If you can see the buzzers. Because if they do get a fast take, it'll pull down there and it won't keep sliding that distance from here. If I put the ring the other side, it can slide, it can pull like that and actually slide up here. 
he can slide off the backrest because I don't have those. I don't like those clip down backrests. I don't like them at all. I end up striking and pulling the whole lot out of the water. So when this comes down, it will be on backwind. This will turn. But then the ring will give you a little bit of tension up against here and you'll get a better sort of take, I feel, without having the rod crash off the backrest. That's my just, that's just my take on it. I've shallowed out. It must be very shallow, this place, because I've... Oh, there's a catfish moving right over by that brick wall then. Hopefully when it gets to dust, they'll come on and I haven't missed my only chance there. I couldn't get here. I didn't want to indeed get it until about four. So I'm fingers crossed I can get a bit of dusk fishing. As you get into the winter, it can actually get pretty good. I mean, there's normally small fry flitting about here, especially coming on dusk. And as you can see there, there's absolutely nothing. It's a mill pond. Maybe one or two just starting to come. It's uh, quarter past five nearly. I suppose you've got an hour and a half before it gets dark. So I would expect small fry to move and I'd be very surprised if the catfish don't move with them. So I'm figuring all the small fry, maybe they're around the margins and then out in the middle, you know, because if they go in the middle, they're going to get eaten, who knows? But hopefully there'll be a bit more action um, later on. Or as it gets, as the light level goes down. The cloud up here, that's pretty handy actually, because that's made it, you know, grey and it's uh, kept the low light levels down there. So that sort of works in my favour. But then I think a lot of time, what are they hunting with catfish? Is it just scent? It can't be. They must have vibration as well with those big feelers they have. And and the small fish pick up the vibrations from them as well, I don't know. Because I was just talking to Mick and uh, just saw the float pull off to one side. So that's the, uh, I'm going to call it the oriental float, but of course we don't know whether it's lit up or not yet anyway because it's still daylight. This one's off over the other side. There's a fish around that there. See you in the wild anyway, but uh, I'll pop back in a while. Yeah, yeah, I'm away now, Mick. Thank you very much. I'm happy. <laughs> So it just goes so you still get them in the in the daylight here. It's cranked quite a bit of line off. Just saw the flow going sideways, so I thought I'm gonna strike straight away. Here's the flow. It felt it sort of halfway decent fish. I apologise for kneeling down like this to fight, to fight the fish, but I've got it balanced on the freezer box, that funny little tripod, so I'm hoping everything holds together. It's off again. I think this might be a good fish. Lovely still evening. He's coming in very, very obligingly for a catfish. I might take this one first go. Well, you know, so I just did them. I wound my other line in, but I just made sure it was on back wind because when I was talking to Mick, I wound it in, I just left it laying in the water. There's every chance here at Palmwood that one will take it in close. So I didn't want to lose the rod. Oh, that's a nice fish, it's double wind.
Dear me. Look at this kitty. She just nicked on the outside. The hook fell out there. And there, look. There's that oriental float with the two little wires sticking out from it. I'm still not sure that it's light or not. Nice fish. Let's see if I can get a better picture for you this side. That's better. There he is. Yet another beauty from Pondwood. God almighty. That bait's good, but there's a lot of fish in here. The fish is middle to upper doubles. Pleased with that one, obviously. Yeah, I was just standing talking to Mick, the owner. We were talking about uh, different stuff, topics, government budgets, wastefulness, all, this, all the usual sort of stuff. What are they spending all our taxpayers' money on, all that? And then uh, just saw the float going like this. And I thought, I'm going to strike that one, not going to miss a second one. Anyway, what I was going to say is middle, late autumn. There might be a chill in the air, but the water temperatures generally can stay out quite well. So unless you get like frost or, you know, a real major northerly airflow, there's every chance you can still catch what you would catch in the summer in the autumn, albeit you will get cold. Look at me, I've got, you know, extra gear on. Um, it will get chilly. I'm going to put the body up in a minute because the sound's not great. Not even sure where the microphone is on this one. Thought I had another bite. No. Um, yeah, so don't neglect middle to late autumn. F say float fishing for catfish, it could be carp, it could be anything. Barbel in the rivers, it's a really good time. It might be cold initially, but the actual water temperature will hold up for, you know, maybe a week or more sometimes, unless you have a big long cold spell. So if it just drops suddenly, it might shut them down for a few hours, but hang on till the evening. Just don't forget, it gets dark earlier and earlier all the time and that gets your chances going way up. Barbel, chub, anything, eels, every, everything that you would fish for in the summer, instead of waiting till 10 o'clock at night when it's, you know, getting dark, it could be six, six o'clock, something like that. I want to see one of these go back winding. Beeper going, buzzer going, buzzer screaming out, and the real whirring around. I'll settle for that one, that's about 16 pound I reckon that fish. Got two different lines on these reels. One is uh, I think about 20 pounds, I think the other's 16, 15, 16, well one's real nice line, it's the grey one. Uh, it's Mike's line, God we've had it years, in both of these years, been good lines. One's a cheap line, one's probably a more expensive line. But I noticed the better quality line is laying on the surface a bit more, so if there's a lot of wind it would get dragged around which is not a bad thing if it's moving the float around the cheaper one uh, the heavier one just bosh it just sinks which again on windy conditions might work in your favor because it might not pull so, you know so quickly through the swim so there are different grades of lines you know every maker line is slightly different I know some of them are spooled up and just have different names on them and it certainly turns out it's the same line but a different color but at the end of the day it's what you get on with and what you're happy using and I've had these years and I haven't changed re or anything. This one's very nice to use. Good strength, good tensile strength, I like it. Cast a long way because it's fine. That's Mike's one. He obviously paid more for that. That's mine co-op string type black stuff. Just a cheapo one. Trust me, it does a job. One thing I won't do is fish light line for catfish at all. It's no point. 15, 20 pound line, really. You know, depending on the size of if you're going for bigger fish, you use, you know, bigger lines. Well, we're hooked up, guys. I can't do anything but put the camera on top of my camera bag. And hopefully, we get some bit of an angle on it. I think it's a small one, this one. The float disappeared, and I just saw the line pulling tight through the surface of the water. So regardless of the light, float fishing, suspending, but it does work for catfish. 
assuming it's a catfish of course. It will be, he's going for the margins. Lost one over the other side, I think. There's some scrappers in these things. He's in, boys. Come and meet my friend Matt. There we go, fish. Well, I'm not weighing them, but I'm figuring. Just, just shy of doubles, I think. Calm down. Just shy of double figures. I mean, it's a good action, isn't it? It's a really good action there. I've got the brolly up, the big brolly, because um, I've got airflow coming off the back. And as I say, with this camera, it's not the greatest. I haven't got the old umbilical lead that I used to have. It's really good. But these other GoPros don't seem to make them, I don't think. So it's normally naff sand. Any sort of wind is naff. And my other cameras as well. Can't be bothered to spend loads of money on microphone stuff. It's not worth it for YouTube. It's different if I suppose you work for television, you'd have to have it just making my own fishing films, that's all that I do. I'm always going to say, always take a, bit, a brolly like this, or something, because in this late autumn, middle of autumn, that sort of time when it's on the change, you've only got to get a little bit of airflow, and that will chill you right down, and you won't fish properly, you won't like it, you won't enjoy it, and therefore you won't put as many trips in, you'll say, I've finished now, you know, it's winter time. And very often, as I say, although the air temperature is cooler, the water should be okay for a good couple of three weeks. It's gone very still here on the last angler, the last man sitting as it were. There's no, every single person's gone now. So I've got the entire lake to myself. But they're just, they, they were moving about four when I got here. There's a few splashing around on the top. Whether it's going to come to anything tonight, I don't know. Mick seems to think it's, you know, every night is a good night. But, you know, they must have their off times. And of course, I want to fish before, because catfish don't like the cold, and they will get locked jaw, disappear under a hole in a bank somewhere, and sit there hibernating. I suppose that's what they do. I know I will. Well, guys, here's something new. A Chinese float lights up. It's definitely, I'm sure it's a light now. But I had a couple of little bumps around it. I just, I just, bumped it, I just did this, I just jigged it once or twice and a fish tried to cut, a catfish tried to eat the float. <laughs> so they like that light, apparently. It's definitely, I'll see if I get the other camera on it, I'm pretty sure that is, that is lit up now.
Jesus Christ. That guys was not faked. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I'm in the fighting chair. Let's get this other one out of the way here. Well, I've got to say, I saw the float go, I just thought, I'll do a sitting down by the umbrella shop. Where it went. Right, let's change angle for you people. Watch me lose the fish now. Smaller fish this time. Take them all. It's on the Chinese float as well. In daylight. I'm sorry about the different camera angles, but that's what it is at the moment. I forgot the head cam strap, the tripod, everything. This is bizarre because it's supposed to be a film about using night floats. <laughs> and I've used night floats but it's broad daylight. A smaller fish but still good to see. Now it's nearly time for cook up, but not with Mr. Catfish. Well, three catfish on a night light float and it's still daylight. It just shows you float fishing well, 30 inches deep. Two feet, three feet maximum, I'd say. Does it make any difference? Oh, jeez. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He's got it. Missed him. <laughs> Messing about with the camera. Trying to get you the shot. Dinner's being undertaken here. Shame, it could have been a 20 pounder. Let's get the grub on the go. Guarantee to get fish. And this is the only grub I've got, I forgot everything else. I've had one sandwich all day and a chocolate thingy. Still enough light for the old GoPro just. It's not a low light camera at all. But I've, I've got my camera floodlight here so I might be able to cobble something together in the pitch dark um, for you, you know, just to show you if we do get one. I'm confident, I have to say I'm confident. A little bit of breeze coming, a wife texted me, said the weather's on the change, make the most of it. So it'll be back to the uh, steel staircase. I feel well worth doing the work to grab. What I'm doing is fishing at the right time. Because I haven't told you guys yet, but I have had an absolutely catastrophically huge catch here, which is another film and it will go up next year, 2023, I'm not putting it up yet. Um, I mean, unbelievable. I never experienced anything like a feeding frenzy in the dark like I experienced that night. Only in the Florida Keys with tarpon feeding on Silver Mullet Run. It was beyond belief. I'm sure it won't kick off like that tonight because there's not enough small fry on the top. This was earlier in the year when it was warm, a lot of fry on the surface. Boom, it just exploded. This is going to explode in a minute. Yeah, the reason I have spank bowl is um, like an emergency, it's like, you know, I'm not going to get home till late tonight and I might have a bowl of cornflakes or something like that, but this is pasta and that's normally, Mike always tells me, long burn, so that's going to keep me going until I can get home. But don't burn it first. Very hard to regulate these. I 
I feel there's another one coming in a minute. I really do. Probably when I'm just about to eat this bag bowl. First bat, first bat just went zooming past. Always a good sign. I just hope up there is pretty, pretty dark. I just hope it's not going to uh, rain. Another bat. You guys might see this just come through the lens. I've seen a lot of. Uh, there's one there. I've seen a lot of, of bats this year. Whether it's because I've been doing more night fishing, I don't know. Somebody said that a Dorbenton's bat. I think it's, if I pronounce it right, a Dorbenton's bat. Well, you can see how long that uh, reel was backwinding for. Um, if I'd have picked the rod up and struck the catfish, I would have got the catfish. The Chinese float, it looks like a mooring buoy off Southampton water with a light on it. It's a wonder it hasn't got a bell as well. Definitely, definitely works. I can't actually, I can see the float, but I can't see the glow of the light stick one. Which is, uh, I would have thought we'd have been brighter, but the, that Chinese float, man, it's, 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 it's like a bonfire. So I'm gonna have some grub first. Or not, depending on. Oh, that's clever. Let's let's catch that alive for mine. Yeah, I've really. When I was working, doing this steel plate thing on a staircase, got carried away, and I didn't bring enough food. So this is it. Spag bowl survival till midnight. And a dribble of water. Right, I'm ready for the fish. Let me show you this, this light. It's a low light camera, so it would look like it's daylight. Trust me, it's dusk. Now, it's very, very dark out there. You won't know it, but you can obviously tell by the building with all the lights on. So if I try and hunt around for this float, there it is, I can see it already. It's definitely working. Those two wires have to be pulled apart. That's amazing. That is absolutely lit up. I'm hoping I can uh, get to show you in the pitch black. The yellow one is still not dark enough for it to show yet. I would never have thought that works, but it does. When it gets dark, I'll put it in close. That's something that could be used sea fishing as well there, you know, I'm amazed. I wonder how long they last for. That'd be good fishing off a pier in the dark, I can tell you. People must think I just survive on spaghetti bolognese, and of course I do when I'm fishing. It's best I let that cool off. The drone in the traffic, other than the aircraft you can hear from Heathrow, and I think it's White Waltham, is there a, a, a small airstrip there? popular small aircraft one is um, the M4, not a million miles away, so you've got a sort of constant background noise of uh, traffic. Not excessive, not excessive. Normally the screaming buzzer will drown out the sound of the traffic, in your mind anyway. guys I was filming bats again they seem to be lucky for me <coughs> I'm trying to fight this one one handed because I can't now put the camera in my mouth like I normally do I'm going to have to go to the other camera There we 
go. There we go. Just another one. Just another pond wood catfish. There is no shortage of them. Let's get it back. Then I've got. I'll let me have a tripod for putting this on, which is fine, but there's plenty of light. That's better. Now we've got it. Now we can kill gas so I can see it now. Guys, we hooked up again. There's no question, this float, actually, when you lift it out of the water, it switches off. Yeah. And then, it gets, as soon as it hits the water, it's on again. Yeah, Maybe we met the owner, Mick was telling me that the little fish I was mentioned about earlier on, they can sometimes come on later in the, uh, I suppose in the dark, that's the name it. Yeah. When it gets a bit dark, well, I'll, just, I'll get the float down in close and you can see the difference between the two floats. A little bit smaller fish this time, but let's say they all give you a good bite and the float just disappeared. And get a little bit darker in a minute and I'll be able to show it to you in the water. That float is something else. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of gobsmacked with that. It's got, I thought, that sellotape in the middle. I'm gonna show you one back in the, uh, in the office. Maybe tonight when I get home, I'll just drop it in the, uh, I've got a tank outside, I've been, repairing and uh, trying to make use of an aquarium that somebody was throwing away and I thought it would be ideal for baits and for showing float setups and it might show you the difference between the two it's like, I can't tell you, it's ten times better than the starlight Honest, honestly, I've got a blazing camera floodlight blade in my face here and I can see it across the lake, you'd see it a hundred yards away, it's just unbelievable I'll have to get in touch with Jerry and mate and say, hey where did he get them B, how much do they cost and see how long do they last. I can see them lasting a long time because as they come out of the water, the contact's broken. It's a very, very good idea, but they look, look, it looks a really, really cheap float. I can assure you, I'm catching catfish on it, that's all I know, first time out of the box. Well, it's not even in the box, it's just wrapped up in a piece of paper. I think most of the uh, bats have probably, well, they haven't gone, but I can't see them. As well as my two tripods and other stuff on the head cam, I forgot my main head torch, you know, for hooking up baits and doing bait rigging and untangling and stuff like that. Beautiful evening. It's, as Mick was saying, it's actually quite warm. It's not too bad at all. This just gives me a bit of a, a boost for sound. And also, I won't get cold because it keeps the uh, air movement off me. Broke a nail on that last catfish, it's terrible. I'll have to go to the manicure shop. That tastes very nice. It's on, it's on, it's on. I'm on. I'm on. That is a yellow float that time, people. Oh my god. Did I get it right coming at the right time or what? Day, day ticket menu, and you can do night tickets here as well. People I've talked to say you won't even, you, you'll be. Oh, I can't stop this one. Don't want you picking up and tangling that lovely red float out. I think we're okay. Sorry I can't change angle guys, I've got the, I've got the light right and I've got the uh, camera on a, on a, on a cooler, on a, on a ah, broken over tiny, tiny little tripod that's been broken about three times. So I'm getting what I'm getting, I'm not, you have to trust me there is a fish on the end, I'm sure you know by now. I hope, can't even 
Only a decent fish. Might be a double figure. I'm watching, not into the dark, I'm watching for the red float, waiting for that to go as well. It can happen, a double. Pull your string down at these fish. I'm on just regular carp rods here, not heavy, not heavy carp rods. A couple of pound telescope, that's all you want. Don't do a giant, great big pit thing, you don't want those, you want a bit of sport, don't you? Well, just we use shark tackle otherwise. Yeah, there's somewhere still a way out, I can't see my uh, starlight yet. I think next time I will use a bigger one because I'm fishing at quite a distance, 30 yards, 25, 30 yards for a float that's reasonable. I've got to sort of cobble together all the different lights and everything I've got there. It's another nice cat though. I think he's just going to make double figures this one. And I've just missed another one on the red float by the way while I was netting this. So, what I might well do now, because it's bothered me and Mick said they might come on a bit, like, come on, I've had seven, how can they come on? I'm being eaten alive by catfish. Is um, show you the two floats, then put the lights out, and you might be able to see them in the camera. Let's do that now. So, the starlight, I'll call it this one. The other one's still fishing. It's there. Yeah. That's the starlight one. Let's put this light out and see if I can get this for you because it's all interesting stuff. It's all about night fishing and stuff like that. There we go. You can see it glowing there now. Now you can really see it going, can't you? Okay. Now if I do that with my head torch, you can see there's the two bands. Put it in the middle there. There's the two bands. Doesn't matter about the float. You're watching this bit go under the water. This bit. There's the water where my fingers are. Bosh, that's what you're looking for, that. It, one and a half to two inches, boom, that's your bite. So it's not a question of, you know, having drop back bites or anything like that, ledgering. It's totally different to ledger because it, once it's gone, boom, it's gone, that's the bite. Now I'm going to wheel in the other one and show you the, uh, my new favourite float. Ah, oh, Jesus, it's gone. Come on. <laughs> you have to take my word for it, guys. You have to take my word for it. I just, I just looked up and I thought, oh, where's that red float gone? That's absolutely ludicrous. The fishing is just outrageous. Big jet going over, so amuse yourselves while I fight this fish. Don't feel such a big one, but it's, you know, it's going to be a five, six, seven, eight pounder. It's about the third one that's come over that jet, so they're big ones. So I imagine they're, it's a different flight path for the evening that they're sending them over. Oh dear. I only want to show you guys the float. Fight them with back winds, banging my fingers now. Oh, oh now I'll be moving this camera around and tripod and everything. Give you angles. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's just balance. I'm lucky to get any filming at all done today or tonight. Might be able to turn the camera around. Oh, maybe it's a nice fish. Might be able to turn the camera around and show you the actual float going through the water as you fight the fish. It's like a double to me.
show you the red one in a second. Let's see if I can't turn this camera around gently, not drop it in the water. Hold on, guys. Oh, I trust that to happen. The minute I do that, it disappears. There's the float in the water, guys. That's in and out the water. That's under the water. If it comes out, as it comes up out of the water, the fish is still there. You can see it hanging like a wag to float. That light will go out. It will get dimmer and dimmer. If I lay the rod down to get the fish in the water, like that, you'll see it. It lights up again there. Well, let's get this fish in if we can. As we say in the trade, Uno Lampo. This is a session after work, guys. I didn't get it all. Four o'clock. Well, check him out for yourself. He's another big double. Big tail. And a head that says I can eat anything. So, I can show you this. The best thing I can do is not put any baits in the water. There's the float, okay? Let's get down there closer. Let's get up close and personal. Eh? I feel I know you now. Right, there's the float. Either side here, it's a bit of sellotape and some of the pins. Now if I touch the pins, it obviously conducts electric through the electric through me, look, see? Nothing that side, nothing that side. There's a pin here, right, and a pin there, sticking that tiny little hairpin. I hold there and I hold there, look. Can you see how the current... So as soon as it makes contact with the water, and it's way brighter in the water, I'll put the two side by side. I'm fascinated by him. I think Mick, Mick was as well when he saw him. Something different. Okay, so listen, the left hand float won't cock without the weight of the bait, but you can see the difference in, so it's laying flat. Look, I'll go in on them, and you should be able to see that there. The difference between the battery power, I suppose, that, this one here, look. I mean, look at the reflection in the water. It even lights the line up red. And if I fall back, properly. This is how you'll see it as an angler. That's what you're going to see. Obviously not that shape of the reflection because there'll be baits on them. But that gives you an idea what you can see. Definitely the one on the right. That Chinese thing is, um, whatever it is, I don't know, Asian, it's um, definitely, definitely the better of the two. Of course you can just put a bigger light stick on the left and still, you know, do it that way. Right, let's get these baited up and chucked out. Great. 1912. I knew that was a good fish. Let's see if we can get your picture. I'm verge of exhaustion. I knew it was, I called it a 20 pound until we put it on the scales. But it is a nice fish. 1912. I knew it was different when I stripped a load of line out. Come on, they're so slippery. Oh, the old back's gonna go. I'm gonna move that, that light one second. Needs a minute to try and get that under there. Watch it go out now. That could, that could do, be the picture I want. What do you think, guys? That's a nice fish, is it not? as close to 20 pounds I'm going to get tonight. What a session. I've had another one that I didn't film. This one, by the way, is number 10. All on float uh, with those lights. And yes, this one was on the red float again. Time to get him in the way, sling. And what again, guys, it's number 11. The float, I don't even think the float settled, to be honest. Don't think it's settled. I'm not altogether sure whether it's not that red line. I'm wondering if that red, it's nearly always the red float. Is it actually attracting them? 
you know, the light's attracting them, or is the light attracting the smaller fish? Fry and roach and stuff like that. So Mick was telling me there's thousands of roach fry in there, thousands for them to eat the catfish to chew on. So maybe they're coming up around the light, and then boom, he sees the bait, the secret bait, and takes that. Happy days. I've got one bait left after this in the packet. And I've got to go home and it's just gone half past eight and it's number 11. The wrists are giving out. Bosh, that's another one. That's awfully where the yellow float is, you know, the, the other light. I can't see it. All, all these uh, lights I've got on here can't quite make it out. That's ridiculous. This is a workout. That's another double fish of fish there, people. Oh, I can't even bother to film it, I'm so exhausted. Whew. Actually, this camera just pulls it out. Can you see that? You can see all the lights, it's pitch black. We're going really slow, it should stay focused. And there is, there's the float. The blue is a reflection of a burglar alarm, I think that is. You can see the reflections bouncing up and down, but the orange uh, tip of the float is a moving. I haven't got a tripod, so I can't, that's full zoom. So look, if I pull back, you can see pitch black, probably 30, that's a good 30 yards away, look. And you can still see the float. It's going. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> that was the take then. Goes to the journey. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on, guys. Let me get the camera set up. That is ridiculous. I saw the float going. You tell me, two minutes? I might have missed how he's come off. No problem, no. Can't show you the bait, otherwise I'd have to shoot you. But there's the float before it actually goes out. When it dries out along here with these two wires, then that will go out. But that's what it's like at the moment. A brilliant piece of kit, as far as I'm concerned. I've run out of bait. I've had 13 catfish to 19, whatever that was, 12, 19, 12, 19, 14, it was just under 20. I couldn't make it 20, um, it's just the way it is. Several double figures in there, the other one was 16, I think it was, 14, 16, 11s, that sort of weight, and then small ones, sort of eights. Colossal catch, colossal catch, I'm absolutely green crackered, it's quite mild. Not, I, I can't carp fish anymore, it's just ridiculous. The trouble is catfish fight so hard. And wait for this. The film I did before this, I had a monumental number. And I can't tell you because it's in the next film. So if I'm knackered now, can you imagine what I must have caught in that other film? And that's going to be put up next year. What a session. Beautiful evening. I've got the conditions right. I've got that bait, obviously. The bonus was that float. Do you know what, I definitely think that the fish, the little fish, come around that red light and then the catfish come around and then they see my bait suspended about two feet down, something like that, 30 inches down. I'm sure that's what's happening because why else, unless the catfish are attracted to the red light, I don't know, who knows, any catfish experts out there? I'm no catfish expert, I just catch them. I'm not an expert. I wouldn't pretend to be a catfish expert, but I do okay. Packing up time, guys. Thanks for watching this episode. It was only a short one, I mean, it's not even nine o'clock and I'm packing up. It's just exhausting. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching TA Fishing. Skip across, take a look at Mike's TA Outdoors, always some interesting stuff on there. Meanwhile, 
I'm going to go and have a lie down before I go on the next fishing trip. I don't think it should be catfish, I need something smaller. A beach fishing session on the south coast. That will sort me out. Sit there, wait for nothing. Right guys, let's go. Well that was some really great action. Robin action on a float. I really enjoyed it. Something different from just listening to the buzzers and watching the bobbing go up that type of it's a different method and these i mean i don't get over i can't get these floats in my head how do they work with those two wires i know they conduct electricity or make whatever but they're so bright i don't understand it i'd love to know how long they last and i'd love to know who sent them to me i think it was with mate jerry let me show you in close up and if i put these lights out you might i put my hand around it you might even be able to see them glow as you lower them into the water and they seem to get brighter in the water and as soon as you take them out the water drains off they go out so a lot of the time you think oh it's not working it is on contact with the water check this out a glass of water my new favorite night float i'm going to pull the shutters down on the window put the light out see if we can darken it a bit and you'll see that light up hopefully should be able to see something There is my water, in goes a float, watch. Oh, 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 I love them, I can't get over it, look at it. I cannot get over those. And of course you can shot it down a little bit more so it goes, well it won't go down any further than that, you know, because I'm in the bottom of the glass. But look at the amount it throws out, look. It's got my hands on fire. Very, very impressed. And if I take it out, see the light fade? And as I lower it, back in. Very, very impressed with them. And this is what it says on the packet. That's the packet as they come. If I just pull that one out, shake it out there. Does anybody know what that means? That means and that means, because that's all that's on there. There is nothing else. Torn off sort of barcode, but as you can see, there's the float, and there's those little bits of wire. Now, I bent those up. I don't know whether you're supposed to bend them up or not. You know, I bend them so they were sticking out. Just, I don't know, was that made a better contact or what? 